Hey, 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 Gamer Nation. What's up? We're back with another banger. Today we're going to be talking about Counter-Strike 2, my new favorite game. I've been playing this game for about a week now, and I'm going to show you some of the insights on my experiences with the game. Generally, people in the Counter-Strike community don't give a shit about what you have to say unless you have a couple thousand hours in the game. So here's my proof that I have a couple thousand hours in the game. Also, I've played almost every other Counter-Strike game in the series, not including those niche weird ones from Asia. And I'm really well respected in the Counter-Strike Reddit community due to my funny and witty commentary on the game, and my general insightful knowledge, and as luck would have it, I think I was the first person ever to get a 0.000 in CS2. My source is that I made it the fuck up! And my general consensus on the game is that it's still Counter-Strike. It's almost comical how little has changed about the game. Looking back to the difference between Counter-Strike 1.6 and Counter-Strike Source, and then after Counter-Strike Source and Counter-Strike Global Offensive, there were pretty big balancing and mechanical changes between each one of those games. Counter-Strike 2 is just shiny Counter-Strike Global Offensive. One of the mechanical changes that they did make was you can chuck a smoke grenade from one corner of the map to the other corner of the map. Um, I don't know how long this is going to last. I think that they're either going to have it explode midair, something like the Molotov cocktail. They might also just replace the skybox. Another thing of note about smokes is that you can shoot bullet holes through them now. In my opinion, this doesn't really do anything except nerf shooting through smokes, which is good because it was always stupid and random. Now whenever somebody starts spraying down a smoke, you have a porthole right to their head. Also, throwing a grenade at a smoke makes it dissipate for a short time. This has a few implications, like being able to delete molotovs and push through smokes for free. This change is going to take a long time to get used to because I just think that this changes such a large amount of things in a very small way. Like in higher level matches, you might see somebody having to hold an angle that's already smoked off. And don't get me wrong, the lack of changes are a plus side. Counter-Strike Global Offensive was, and still is for a short period of time, the best multiplayer competitive shooter ever made. And when CS2 releases and people get on the servers, CS2 is going to be the best multiplayer competitive shooter ever made. That being said, let's get to some of the more controversial and goofy changes. There are now hit marker sounds. It gives you a little bit of a feedback for when you hit somebody so you can let your teammates know how much they're hit for. The follow recoil crosshair is no longer bound to SV cheats. This means you can use it in valve comp lobbies. Presumably all lobbies will allow this. Um, I can see this being a little bit of a problem for the lower ranks, but in higher ranks, I don't see this being used. Moving crosshairs are generally just pretty distracting, so people don't use them. One change I really hate is there is no way to tell how much you hit your enemies for until the round is over. This stops teams from knowing precisely how much health there is left. One of the worst things about this is that just like there's Rain Men with CSGO money, there's gonna be Rain Men with the CSGO damage system, so trying to uh, limit people's information on this. Somebody's going to be trying to count behind the scenes how much damage each bullet did from what range and eventually certain players will just have a great advantage over other players just by reading the wiki for hundreds of hours. This isn't the skill I want to see and I want to practice in Counter-Strike. The skills I want to see and practice in Counter-Strike are actually playing the game, not counting how much lost money and buy money they get every round based on how many lost rounds and how many won rounds and what they've saved, so what weapons they'll have. I don't think that they're bringing this in the right direction for the game. I don't think you need to go towards the guesstimation station, but rather putting as much information as possible on the leaderboard without giving somebody like a huge advantage. What I'm talking about is basically just replace those lost bonus bars that you have to learn how much each bar is worth with just a number. Same thing with damage values. Um, a lot of CSGO players did not understand that if you open up console, which you have to enable in the first place, if you open up console, you can see the damage you did to every single player you hit that round, rather than just seeing the damage you did to the player that killed you. And then you have to do some sort of addition with everybody looking in console and figuring out which player is the last player alive, and then how much each player hit them, and um, finally coming out with a number long after your teammate's dead, thinking about, oh, you they were hit 90, and you just could, didn't call that out in time because, you know, all of the coordination and math, and you want to keep comms clear, so it's really difficult to do all that. Why don't we just have a number on the leaderboard? What each enemy is hit? Pro players know that, and I don't think it would be a big problem giving that uh, knowledge to lower level players. 
I would imagine it can stop a few saves too. Almost everybody in Counter-Strike hates save meta for a good reason too, it's boring, but when somebody's last on their team and it's a 1v3, they're probably just gonna save, but if they know that every enemy is on like 20 health, then maybe the tides turn a little bit and they actually go out and try to pistol them to death. So the game's in beta and it's not really fair to bring up bugs, but I'm gonna bring up bugs anyways, it's fun. Um, the belt-fed weapons don't have belts, I don't understand this at all. If you don't have the latest graphics driver, it might recognize your card as being like a 200 megabyte card when your card has way more storage than that. This can cause textures to not load in full resolution, this can also just cause textures to not load at all and it to be white, and the game might play incredibly choppy. Because there's no warning for quitting the game, they unbound F10 by default. I use uh, Alt F4 to quit all of my games, so please add that back. I don't know if this is a bug, but I'm going to put it here because I really hope it's a bug. Of course, you can bind F10 to quit. Um, I would just prefer it to have a splash screen. I'm going to say this is a bug, but hopefully it's a bug. One of the buggiest places in the entire game is the intro screen, which is pretty funny because it's the first impression you get of the game. Oh my god, bro. Oh, hell no, man. What the fuck? It really just hasn't worked right when you use 4K resolution, along with it not even loading for me anymore. I haven't seen it since I opened it for the first time. There's this little bit hanging off the Valve logo that I have no idea what it is and it's kind of annoying. And many more glitches that I haven't even run into because, again, I can't see the goddamn intro screen anymore. Though all skins are going to be ported to the new models eventually, right now a lot of skins that aren't ported just load the old models for the guns. In CS 1.6 and CS Source, skins were freely available to download on websites like Game Banana and stuff, and therefore people made a whole lot of like outlandish skins that would totally change the model of the gun. This wasn't allowed in CSGO for a lot of reasons, one of them being that you could shrink a weapon model down to a size that would give you an advantage. Though if you've ever seen a modded version of Counter-Strike, you will know that this is possible, just not on official Valve servers. Another weird bug is that if you bind anything in the console, it doesn't really save it. Like for instance, I spent half an hour binding a bunch of different crosshairs to my uh, keypad like I do in regular CSGO and it didn't save any of them. They worked for the duration of the game, and then when I closed it, reopened it the next day, none of them worked anymore. I've been asking people to make sure that this bug wasn't just me, and everybody has said that this happened to them too. Every time you scope in with a sniper rifle, it drops a few frames from your game. But it only happens if you haven't scoped in in a while. My guess is that it had something to do with texture streaming, because it literally freezes your game for like a little bit and then like comes back. Some of the more stylized choices are the HUD. I love the new HUD. Um, it looks great. Everything's more centralized, so you're not caught looking at your health when somebody peeks you. Uh, the new uh, intro screen, it's fantastic. You have the like your character sitting in the middle, so it's you know a lot more focus on whatever skins you choose to have on your character. And it runs way better than Panorama. Um, I've always hated Panorama because I get like 30 FPS in the menus in CSGO for whatever goddamn reason, and I can't fix it. Also, in my opinion, Panorama kind of looked like shit. It had so much stuff all over it, just like scale form, except it was way harder to figure out what was where and what was happening, because a lot of the text was white on white background. It was kind of ridiculous. Everything was light mode, so it was blasting your eyes with just, like, radiation. And this is especially if you use, like, uh, monitor settings, which are required in CSGO. Not in this game. This game is way brighter, which is great. But it's required in CSGO for you to boost your monitor to the highest setting, literally deep fry it, burn your eyes out just so you can see the enemies better because that game is dull as fuck. And Panorama just kind of made it even worse. While this new UI is still very bright and doesn't have a lot of good places to put text, it's still an overall improvement over Panorama, although I wish that they would either allow you to add your own custom user interface without like having to fuck around with too much stuff, or bring back something like Scaleform with a lot more customizability. But since for some reason neither one of those things are ever going to happen, this is a great uh, compromise, I think. I know there's probably a million and one stylization things that I missed, but there's a half-time animation and an end-of-game animation. They're alright, there's not too much to say about them, although the end-of-game animation has, like, these card things. 
on them that will tell you what you did rather than just having it written with a transparent background. So I'm thinking that these cards are probably going to be like replaceable or like come with your music kit or something. I don't know, it would be cool to see. I know this isn't gonna happen, but Valve, please add an option to remove agent models. I hate them. The models reduce visibility in certain situations and I hate hearing their voice lines every five seconds throughout the map. I'll ask my teammate if they need a buy and instead of sitting up in their gamer chair and telling me, they'll respond with, Oh, wow. Very nice. Ding dong. Indeed. <laughs> Here comes the fun. Oh, I like it. Yes, yes, yes! Are you coming? Oh, wow. That was fast. Aha, I've hidden from you the one feature that makes this game way better than CSGO. It's pretty well known, no matter how many tools they choose to give us, Source 2 is a huge deal for mappers and modders. Imagine the type of insane stuff that the classic offensive team could do with the tools provided in the Source 2 engine. And I think that it's probably likely that Valve will provide us with a lot of tools and an easy way to download mods into our game. Most people never really messed around with heavily modding CSGO because it does have a few risks inherent to it. But if you could add something like this to the workshop with custom game mods, think of going to the community workshop browser and finding a server that runs the Halo mod for Counter-Strike. If you've ever messed around in the Team Fortress 2 community browser, you've definitely seen this stuff before. People already get really creative with their game modes in Source 1, and in Source 2, there will be even more mechanics and options for these creators to implement in their games. And assuming that CSGO's peer-to-peer -peer servers can be used with these mods, it will create an amazing experience for your friends to just fuck around in these cool mods. I can't wait for this game to get fully released so we can get our hands on the development kits. I know for sure that I'm gonna try my hand at map making again once it drops. Well, looks like this is the end of the video. Thank you for watching this far. Like, comment, and subscribe or I'll find you and see you in the next one. Valve, please, I'm begging you, be consistent with your names. Don't name it CS2, it's CS Source 2. You know Counter-Strike Source was named that because it was Counter-Strike ported into the Source engine. Why is CSGO ported into the Source 2 engine not just named Counter-Strike Source 2 or Counter-Strike Global Offensive Source 2? I beg of you, be consistent.